you guys are in for a treat. Today's guest is a super well-known guy. And more than that, he drops the goods in this episode. But before we get to it, I would like to do a little housekeeping. And I want to thank everybody who's reached out to me with an email telling me how they feel about the show. And I've gotten some great feedback. Um, I got one from Brock, Andrew J. Gross, Ron, my man Paul out in Toronto, just to name a few. And for everybody who's left a review on iTunes, thank you so much, man. It means so much to me because it helps the show. It helps us move up in rankings. Um, Keon, he gives us a five star and says, am I wrong on gorging on this podcast back to back? Hey, uh, you are not wrong. You're doing just the right thing. Um, we have Joey Liciousness. We have Grace Cash. Hubba Bubba. Hey, Bubba. Hey, thanks, man. Um, Bill Conrad. I know that guy. Nod Diverboo. I'm not sure what that is, but he's trying to pass his real estate license here in California. Seymour's 2002. MW Jazz. Alex Designs. Uh, Anthony Carnavali. My man, he's out in San Diego. Lily B, uh, USCLA Awaken Anthony. That's Anthony Bulin. He actually pushes you to his, his episode, number 14. Hey, that's all right, Anthony. It was a good episode. Ryan Gray, MD. Melinda, Austin, Yo Pro Wealth. That guy has a podcast. He's trying to get me on it. Uh, Hooked on Birds, which is Pat Hyben, Mike Dank, real estate analyst. I'm not going to go through all these. Everybody, thank you so much. I appreciate it. But let's get to the show. Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. Today on the show, we have Mike Ferry. This is a man who needs no introduction. He's a speaker, trainer, author, and one of the most influential voices in real estate. He's trained tens of thousands of people and has built a $50 million empire while transforming lives. Hey, Mike, thanks for taking the time out today. Wow, if I'd have known that I was doing that much, I would have charged you more for this interview. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for those very kind thoughts. I appreciate it. You know, so I, I've given a, just a brief overview of your background, but you know, maybe take a minute, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your current business. I've uh, I started this company 39 plus years ago, um, so I've been involved in the training and coaching aspect that entire time. Um, the last 25 years, we started the coaching, and I think it was October 1988. So. We've been doing the coaching for 25 plus years, the training for, as I said, 39. And uh, I actually got involved in the real estate industry by starting with a title insurance company and then uh, worked in the escrow side of the field and then back into the title insurance, then into real estate and then into the training. So I've been doing this actually since I was 18. And since I'm going on age 69, that means I've been doing this for 50 years. So if I sound tired, it's only because I am. Well, I, I mean, how do you that, – That's a, you bring up a good point. Um, you know, one thing I see, Mike, when I, when I talk to super successful people is that, uh, number one, they always have a ton of energy. And I've seen you on stage, and you do. And number Thank two, you. no matter how successful they become, they, they always find a way to continually to, to push those goalposts further away from them. And, and then they strive to get there. Uh, you know, how, how do you do that, and how do, how do successful people attain that? Well, I, I think we have an advantage. We've been very lucky for a long time, as a lot of your listeners know, to work with a lot of the best agents in the industry. And the best agents are the people you just described, and they're always pushing. So um, I, I really have never had any choice. If I'm going to be affiliated with the best agents, I have to keep extending where the goalposts are so I can keep challenging them to keep moving forward and growing. Uh, if I was, you know, for example, a specialist in new licensees, brand new agents, etc. cetera, um, this kind of thinking we're having now wouldn't really take place. So I would really say that my biggest advantage in growing and learning is to keep up with all the great agents that we coach and train. Hmm. Um, and, and when, you know, do you have, when people come to you, I'm sure you get uh, people who are very new in the industry as well as I've seen some of your, um, some of your other uh, quick uh, YouTube videos and, and, there are agents that do uh, twenty, fifty million dollars a year, and they still they still go, come back to you to get coached. Why is that? Why do somebody 
that successful, why do they need you? Well, you know, if you look at the other fields that we're all involved in or see and hear about, I mean, Tom Cruise still goes to acting coaches. Right. <laughs> He's probably one of the highest paid performers in the world. Uh, Celine Dion still has a voice coach, and she has, I'm sure, coaches to help her with her dancing and the choreography on, on her stage presence. Obviously, we know Tiger Woods has always had a coach. Um, uh, Peyton Manning has three or four coaches as we speak as they prepare to continue this season being one of the best teams in football. So it's only natural to think then that all the top agents think like all the top people in other fields. They all have coaches. I, I remember reading um, a couple of years ago before Jack Welsh retired, one of his many books that he wrote, which were phenomenal and I recommend them to all of your listeners. But he talked about the fact that very late in his career, he decided he needed to learn something about technology. He hired some of the top technology people in the world to coach him on how to do something as simple as use an iPad. Now here's the highest paid, most successful CEO probably in the history of business has hired coaches to teach him how to use technology. So I think, as you know so well, anybody that's gonna succeed at a high level is gonna to go to that next level and continue the coaching. So we're very lucky. We've had a lot of our clients in coaching today that started with us 25 years ago. Wow. And they've been with us for that long. So, in fact, the very first person uh, that ever got involved in our, what we call our one-on-one -on -one coaching, is still in one-on-one -on -one coaching today. Wow. Yeah, I, 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 I can resonate with that, Mike. You know, um, out of all the people I talk to, um, the, the, the top producers have always started with a coach and they still have a coach. And it's amazing yeah. to me that, that you can see these people in our offices succeed uh, and they have a coach and the the people who are not succeeding, they don't take that step. You know, they do not take that step to go. And, and if you don't, if you can't hire a coach, you can certainly find a mentor. Why is it that those underachievers, um, they don't take that step to go and find somebody more successful to work with? Well, I think there's, first of all, that's an incredibly great question. And I wish I had the best answer for it. I can only give you my impressions. But I think one of the things that our industry is challenged by and has been and probably always will be is the lack of standards that we have as an industry in bringing people in as new licensees. Um, you know, the, the rule of thumb has been for the last, what, 50 to 100 years, if they can breathe out and create condensation on a mirror, they're qualified to be a real estate agent. Sad, <laughs> sad and humorous, but true, yeah. because you look around and you see virtually every type of you know humanity brought in as a licensed agent uh, i can't even tell you how many times over the years i've had agents walk up to me and say i'm brand new in the industry and i'll ask them why did you decide to get your real estate license i didn't have anything else to do i couldn't find a real job i've been laid off my kids are growing up um, my spouse lost their job it's very rare that I hear them say, well, I made the decision I want to be a professional salesperson, and I picked real estate as a career. So I think the underlying problem is, A, we'll hire anybody that wants to be in real estate. And second, we don't have any qualifications in real estate. Do they have to have a good business background? No. Do they have to have a sales background? No. In fact, if they have a sales background, um, most of us don't know what to do with them when they come in. So I think that we as an industry just keep propagating the incompetence of agents. Interesting. You know, for an agent, you know, let's say that, the, you know, certainly our audience is made up of aspiring and, and successful uh, real estate entrepreneurs. Um, what is a good uh, benchmark in terms of spending? So, so should I, as, a, as an agent, I want to I hire a coach or learn you know, is it 10% of my, my income, 20% of my income? What, what amount in terms of budgeting should I budget for personal development? I, I don't think I can really give you a real answer. A couple okay. of years ago, I did, some, I did some personal research. I just wanted to find out the cost of an education. I, I was, you know, because here I am in the educational field. So I said, okay, what is the cost? So I took, you know, like USC in Southern California, UCLA, you know, Washington, I took uh, Florida State, um, you know, Miami University, Ohio State. I took about 20 of the top universities, Notre Dame, New York University, and I did some research to find out what does it cost to get a four-year education? What does it cost to go on to get your master's? And what does it cost to go on to get a doctorate? And I was 
pleasantly surprised to see that in most cases you're going to spend any place from, you know, 75 to several hundred thousand dollars just to be educated enough to go out and get a job that's probably going to pay you 25% of what you spend on your education. Right. Then I went a step further and I said, okay, let's look at other professions. Um, let's look at what you do and what I do and how long does it take to get good at it? And I, I went and I said, okay, if I'm going to be a commercial pilot for American Airlines, what are the qualifications? If I'm going to be qualified to do open heart surgery on a patient, what are the qualifications? What are the qualifications to be a great defense attorney? And I found out that in every case, they're going to spend five to seven to 12 to 15 years of education before they're allowed to practice what they do. So I think there's two issues. One is the issue of how much are you willing to spend to earn the kind of income you want to have for the rest of your life? And how much time are you willing to spend to get to that point? Because it, I don't know if it's 5% or if it's 10% of their income. Um, I don't know if it's 20%, but I know that for an agent that wants to earn 75, 100, 300, 500,000 a year, our coaching and training is almost minute in terms of cost compared to the return. So that's probably a much longer answer than you wanted, but it's just the research I did for myself. No, no, that's, that's fascinating. And, and really kind of what, what I took out of that, Mike, was that, you know, it's, it's, it, that the answer to that question is individual to everybody and you have to, you yeah. have to be in the right mindset. You have to be able to personally ask yourself those questions, get the right answer. Um, and in order to establish an amount for yourself. Now, Coaching is, uh, and, and tell me if I'm wrong here, but coaching is mostly about two things, right, at a high level. It is you as a coach will help uh, get my mindset in the right place and as well as hold me accountable. Well, I think there's no question. We look at coaching and say, okay, it's, it's teaching people the skills required to get to the next level. Okay. It's obviously helping them develop the mindset of a winner, of a person that is succeeding, of a person that is doing something beyond the ordinary. And then, of course, the accountability, which is what they all, you get, you're like this. When a person gets involved in our coaching, we have them fill out about a 30-question questionnaire. And we use that to assign their coach to try to get a good match between coach and potential student. Hmm. And one of the questions we ask is, um, how would you rate the level of accountability that you would like to have on a scale from 1 to 10? They all write 10. Every one of them says, I want strong accountability. So then on the third coaching call, the coach says, can I ask you a question? Well, of course. Why did you not do one thing I asked? Well, if you're going to be like that, I don't want to be involved in the coaching. Oh, wait a minute. You said you wanted accountability. Cry baby. Yeah. Okay. So that goes back to what I said earlier, though. See, if we're hiring people that have a business background or hiring people with a sales background or adequately explaining to any agent that joins us the importance of business practices, business principles, and sales practices and principles, then any coaching that you or I do is going to accelerate their, their production. But see, if they don't have a business or sales background, the accountability really becomes a major issue for them. And, and quite honestly, they all say they want it, it scares them half to death. Yeah, you, you know... You... You know, in selling real estate, right, we're, we are all in a business of, of no's. We hear no's all day long. And sometimes, you know, you have that day or that week where you just feel like you got kicked in the gut and you don't want to, you know, you don't necessarily want to wake up and do it all over again. You know, for people that, that you coach, you know, how do you teach them to push through that roadblock and keep going to find success? Well, first of all, you know, they have to take the mindset that being told no is how you get closer to the obvious yes. That they have to take the mindset that, that being rejected is part of the sales process. Uh, I, I stand up and say all the time, and, I, and you've probably heard me say it in seminars, that if you want to learn to handle rejection and you seriously want to learn how to handle it, do the job that I do. Because I stand in front of 500 or 1,000, 2,000 people, and if 10% of the people actually do what I say, I'm thrilled to death. That means that 90% of them say, basically, up yours, you know, I'm not going to do it. They tell me no, and I accept that as part of the process. So if, you, if you're going to accept the no as part of the process. But the other thing I tell agents all the time, if, you're, if, you're, if you do get told no, or like you stated so well, you get kicked in the gut a couple of times in the course of a week, call a couple of your past clients that really do like what you've done that enjoyed the experience to rebuild and trigger the fact that hey, your work is valuable. Your work is good. 
you can get people on your side. So I always say call three or four past clients that you've had a great experience with. That shifts your mindset right back to where it's supposed to be. That's great. Uh, th- that's amazing, Mike. So uh, people, they, they come to your seminars. They pay you money to, to listen to you. <laughs> And yet 90% of them walk away and they don't implement your, your advice? Do you know why? No. That's what, that's what I want to know why. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I talk about me setting you right up for that one, huh? Yeah, <laughs> Thank good. you. Well, the answer is the industry provides too many choices. Huh. See, you, you, you can't go to work for IBM and have 15 choices of how you want to learn how to sell. You can't go to Xerox you can't go to American Airlines and have 15 choices to learn how to fly a plane. You're going to follow one path, one program, period, that's it. There are no choices. And in real estate, our greatest um, probably benefit is we have choices. Our greatest obstacle in succeeding is we have choices because it is the nature of human beings, and your listeners are not going to like what I'm going to say next, but it won't be my first time I've heard that. It's the nature of human beings to take the path of least resistance. Right. You know, it, okay, Mike Ferry wants me to do A, B, and C, but if I go do this over here, I won't get told no. I don't have to leave the office. I don't have to talk to people, and I can still do a deal. Grow up. Do you actually believe that's going to take place on a regular basis, that you can multiply your efforts and do a lot of deals with that approach and that attitude? But see, that's one of the choices in real estate. See, I stand up and say, follow what I teach precisely and you're going to grow dramatically and succeed. And then somebody walks in behind me and says, you don't have to talk to for sale by owners and you don't have to look as a canned script. You don't have to do those things that Mike Ferry talks about. Do these things, do a mailing, run an ad, you know, buy leads from one of the internet companies. Well, see, it's the conflict of information as they're sitting in my seminar because they hear me say what has to be done, which requires work. And then they hear in their mind, somebody's saying, you don't have to work. Well, if we take the path of least resistance, right. the major portion walk out. Now, can I tell you the good news about this? Yes. They bought a ticket to my seminar. <laughs> That's the business I'm in. <laughs> okay. Absolutely right. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to be cold hearted, but our objective is to sell tickets to seminars, to expose people to ideas, and then a handful someday will join our coaching. Right. It's, a, it's right. a filtering process. I love it. Right, that is your business. That and when they buy a ticket, you've you've done your job well in terms of marketing. Um, yeah. You know, and then so so in talking about the path of the least resistance, this has come up on the show a few times. You know, there's lots of new uh, technology out there, and and particularly I'm talking about social media, and sure. and lots of people uh, in my mind, lots of agents, um, uh, new or aspiring, whatever they tend to hide behind technology. They, they think that marketing is sending out tweets or posting on Facebook, and they don't get in front of people face-to-face. And I know this is a hot topic for you, so I, I want you to, to, to unpack that a little bit. Well, I, th- I think the first thing, I think most of the world recognizes that the whole craze of social media has already left and is behind us, okay? But when I wrote a little crazy book a couple of years ago on social media and go, oh my gosh, if <laughs> the rumblings of people that just adamantly screamed and yelled and asked for my hanging, you know, on the spot. But I expected that, and I wrote it with that purpose in mind. But what I talk about is the fact that, you know, there's always going to be a new magic formula, a new magic wand, a new magic bullet out there waiting for somebody to buy. And right. the question is, how are they going to package it and sell it? Well, social media was one of those perfect packages because, you see, the nice part about Facebook, I mean, how often do you get rejected? Right. How often do you get a list of the people that decided not to like you? And my goodness, if you're a person that's not liked that often, you need to go back and work you know, at the graveyard where you can hide from people. <laughs> the only way people sell real estate is through talking to people. And they have to at some point understand we are in the people, skill, and communication business. But communication is the key point. So what is, what is the theme of young people today? Well, I mean, watch, I've actually sat in my own home with my own children and had them text each other while they're sitting across from each other in the house. And I said, wait a minute. Hello, boys and girls here. You're adults. Uh, If you want to say something to your brother or sister, say it. But see, we get programmed into trying to find a way to avoid conflict. And the truth is, why is social media such a wonderful medium? There's no conflict. You know, I've got... I think 19 or 20,000 people connected with me on LinkedIn. How much conflict is there in that? 
watch either you accept them or you reject them and right. they never know if you reject them so i mean you've got to get beyond this easy way of trying to do business now on the other hand let's be honest if your goal is to do four or five deals a year spend the day on facebook can i give you a specific example yeah love it i have a client in the midwest number one agent in a company out of 600. Uh, last October, the broker brought the top 10 agents together and said, I'm gonna, ask, I'm gonna buy you lunch and I'm gonna ask each of you to tell us how you've done it. So, uh, you've, this year, you're the top 10. How did you do it? Started with number 10. 29 year old guy stands up, he's got the jeans on the t-shirt, the hair all spiked up, you know, he's Mr. Cool. And he had done nine deals in nine months and he's number 10 in the company, okay? Wow. See, that in itself tells you how pathetic our industry really is out of 600 agents and he stands up and he says let me tell you what I do I'm a social media guru a social media expert I tweet I text I'm on Facebook I blog I'm involved in that stuff at least six to seven hours a day and then he smiled and sat down well they go through eight seven six five four three two one and they get to the number one agent also 29 years old dressed in a suit and tie stands up same age as number 10, who's done 91 transactions. 10X. 10X, yeah. And says, listen, um, I just follow the teachings of my coach, Mike Ferry. I prospect two hours a day. I do lead follow-up. I role play in practice. I go on listing presentations. I'm a listing agent, and that's how I do it. Number 10 jumped up in front of the room and said, you're so out of touch with today. <laughs> that's what he said. Look at the board, pal. It yeah, but look at number one, Toronto, and said, I understand I'm out of touch with today, but you're so out of touch with income. Oh, man, that's good. So guess what the broker did? Immediately canceled the meeting because he didn't want any conflict. Huh. Okay, so, I mean, it's unfortunate. Now, I guess my question for you is, and for you and I, what's the next, next magic formula they're going to be promoting? Because there's another one coming. It's just a matter of when. Because right. the truth is social media is really behind us. Okay. Even Facebook has recognized now the need to go after business versus the individual community. Right. Okay. So I mean, you just have, all you have to do is watch the trend and know that it's just another one of those things. I mean, do you realize how many magic bullets I have dodged in the 50 years I've been in real estate? I mean, it's it's like it's it's like it's nonstop. And what do I keep preaching? Prospect every day, do good lead follow-up, pre-qualify every client, make a strong presentation, handle objections, close the sale, start over again the next day. Rinse and repeat. You know, uh, yeah. sp speaking of conflict, Mike, um, y y anybody who has listened to you or watched you on your, your YouTube videos or whatever, um, you're not afraid of conflict. Uh, you know, you're not afraid to, and I, I find that refreshing in the sense that <laughs> you know you 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 are your authentic self you will call people yeah. out you'll say hey that's bull crap D don't be a crybaby um is that a problem do most people want to please everyone and that is is that a is that a stumbling block to success is really what i'm trying to get at well i think to give you a little different perspective on that you know when i started this particular career 39 years ago um you know i had some great role models in the industry. I mean, people like Zig Ziglar and Cavett Robert, you know, these were great speakers, Bill Gove. Now they weren't necessarily real, real estate trainers, but they were great speakers. And I had the good fortune of getting to know them, Earl Nightingale. I worked for him for four years in Chicago. And I would always say to them, tell me your perspective on creating conflict by telling what you believe to be right. And each of them had a different perspective on what they thought should be done. Well, I realized if I was going to separate myself, first of all, I had to be true to myself. As a real estate agent, granted it was 100 years ago, I did the things that I teach today. So I said, if I'm going to be true to myself, I have to tell them the truth about what I did and what I believe has to be done. And if they accept it, hooray. And if they don't accept it, it's okay. So I'm very comfortable in my own skin telling an agent what to do because we now have a history of tens of thousands of agents. So I, I don't, the conflict doesn't bother me because I don't want to please everybody because see in life, five to 8% of the people are going to control most of the wealth, most of the production, most of the listings, most of the sales in any business. I just want to play with the five to 8%. I mean, the 95%, they have a role. It's just not in my life. So if they're mad, it's okay. Right. 
is is uh, would you say that five to eight percent that controls everything are they are they similar to you in the sense that they are their authentic self and and if and if their personality doesn't resonate with someone else that's okay they'll they'll move on well i think that you'll discover if you talk to the best agents in the industry today most of them are listing agents they're not agents with big teams of showing agents like is being propagated again as the new magic formula for today's society um, they're listing agents they list 50 75 100 150 homes a year that's a real strong salesperson. They know that they can 70% of the time when making a presentation to a bona fide seller get a contract signed because of their skill level. But they also, the 25% of the time, they're not going to get it. And whether they walk away and won't take a listing or get rejected, they don't care right. because you always have to remember it is a numbers game. Nobody's going to like everybody all the time. You know, there was a wonderful mentor in my industry that most people don't know. His name was John Hammond out of Scottsdale, Arizona. And John in the 60s and 70s was a great mentor to a lot of people like myself as speakers. And I had a, a seminar I did for John's company in Scottsdale, seven or 800 people. And it was I, I left the seminar that day very pleased with what I had done for the audience and for John who was paying me. A week later, I got a about four-page single-spaced nasty letter from one of the attendees ripping me up one side and down the other. And I mean, I, I was new to the industry. I, I was devastated when I got this letter. So in those days, you actually had to send a letter. You couldn't text and tweet and blog and email. So I read the letter. I was devastated. I'll be very honest with you. I took and I wrote a letter to John Hammond and saying, this is a letter one of your people sent me. If you would like me to reimburse that person the money they paid for your seminar, I will do it because obviously I've let you and this person down. Hmm. A week later, I got an envelope back in the mail. And when I opened it up, there was thousands of little pieces fell out like confetti. And a letter was attached. And it was from John, Mike. Um, enclosed is the letter that you were sent. That's what I think of it. Remember when the good Lord Jesus showed up, he was wearing long hair, a beard, what appeared to be a dress and sandals. People didn't like that either. So get over it. That was all he said to me. <laughs> so guess what? I got over it real fast. People don't like you. That's great. Some people aren't, some people aren't going to like your radio program. It's okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's all right. I think most people will love it, though. Mike. <laughs> Even better yet. <laughs> I feel great. So, so let's go back to what you train. So you, you, know, you say, uh, and people, other people said, you know, if, you, if you follow Mike's program, uh, you know, soup to nuts, A to Z, you will be successful. Um, yes. Time management, I imagine, I, and I've never been coached by you uh, yet, uh, but you know, sure. time management is certainly has to be one of the, the, the things that if you're going to be a successful agent, you have to nail down. Um, yes. Let's talk about how does, how does someone stay productive and focused on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, first of all, I want to just qualify. Thank you for saying the word yet. All right. Good. <laughs> Um, and by the way, and, and hold on, think, not to interrupt you, by the way, I don't sell real estate, Mike, at all. I, I know you don't. Okay. And I know you don't. I'm just kidding with you. But I just want our listeners to know that my job is, as a salesperson, is to sell. And if somebody says, yep, yeah, that's still an opening for a sale. Right. And I think that's what our listeners, you and I, you and I have to understand who our listeners are and what they do. Okay. Well, let's go back to this. We tell agents you should work five days a week. Okay. Um, you should take weekends off because that should be time to refresh, be with your family, etc. We tell agents that during the five days they work, they should probably be working probably 45 to 48 hours per week. We tell them to divide their day, you now listen carefully, listeners, based upon their goal, based upon their goal, what they want to accomplish, they divide their day into productive and non-productive activities. For example, productive activity would be lead generation of any type. Productive activity would be lead follow-up. Productive activity would be pre-qualifying any appointments or leads you have. Productive activity, a showing presentation, a listing presentation. Productive activity would be presenting an offer. The other side of that would be the follow-up on the transaction, servicing a buyer, servicing a seller, etc. So we ask them, say, okay, if your goal is to do 25 deals, how many presentations do you have to have in the course of a year? Right. Well, let's say they have to have 50. If they're working with buyers, they have to have 100 to get 25 sales. Sellers, they probably have to have about 45 to get 25 listings taken. 
then we say, okay, so then how much time do you have to spend in each of these categories to make that happen? So we just ask them then to just say, okay, let's write out what would be considered a good day as to what the activities are that lead to your 25 sales. So we just create a schedule. Then we say, post that schedule in front of yourself. Give a copy to your broker, your manager. Hmm. Give a copy to your assistant if you have one. Give a copy to your spouse. Obviously, give a copy to any agents you have respect for, accountability partners, mastermind group, role play partners, and then let's all work together to keep each other on our schedule because it's too easy to get off it. So it starts with your 100% correct time management. I love that. I love it. You know, in, in terms of time management, you know, as, as, uh, you know, as an agent grows and they, they, they grow personally and they grow their business, at some point they need to stop working in it or, or work in it less and, and work more on it. And that is, a, a, you know, that's when they need to go and build a team. How important is team building uh, when it comes to, to scaling up your, your real estate business? Well, first of all, I am a great non-believer in the team concept that is, quite honestly, it's been around forever. But it's really in the last 12, 14 months become the thing again, even over social media. And the reason why is because as the economy gets better, more and more people come into the business. They have no experience, so they, they latch on and attach to a hopefully productive agent, which is the beginning of a team. So to me, a team is Tony or Mike or Susan or Bob, who's a good agent, doing minimum 50 closed transactions a year, of which 75% comes from listings, 25% from buyers. And they want to then hire a full-time assistant, which you could call a transaction coordinator, if you want to call it that. Okay. Possibly somebody to make sure that the servicing on the listings is done properly. So they're going to hire somebody administratively. That's the beginning of a team. And if they get to 75 deals, they'll hire a second person in that same category to service the paper flow, because the agent's job is to generate business, the staff's job is to service it. But where we get confused then is to say, well, what do I do with the buyers? Why don't I hire a couple buyer's agents? Do I say, okay, what are you going to pay them? Well, if I pay a buyer's agent, for example, 60% of what I bring in, and let's just take the example of a $5,000 commission. So I'll pay the buyer's agent 60% or 3000 and I get 2000 And I go, okay. Have you ever calculated your cost of doing business? They go, what do you mean? I said, well, you have a cost. You've got two assistants now. <clears throat> you have office rent. You have a telephone. You have computers. You, know, you have all these costs. And let's say that your cost per transaction is, let's say, $1,000 because every agent has these costs, period. So now I've got 3000 paid out to the buyer's agent, 1000 in costs. So I'm actually making 1000 bucks per transaction. Today, now listen to this, today, I got a call from one of our brokers and the agent wanted to join coaching, but then decided not to work with us because we wouldn't promote his team concept. The guy had done 60 deals this year to date and only made 105,000 oh. because all the money went to the agents and the staff. So he said, I can't afford to join coaching to least to which I responded, fire all the showing agents and start listing property because all the money's in the listing. So, the team concept, which is the hot topic of today, really is nonsense because as soon as you join, start a big team, your personal productivity drops and all the income is in personal productivity, Right. period. And I don't care anybody that tries to tell me that I'm wrong. If I get them face to face, they're going to lose that battle. A and B, now you're a manager instead of a producer. So why do we get a team? So our ego can get recognized for being big, big numbers with low income. That's not the way I want to live. You and I together. Right. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, you know, this show, I mean, your, your whole, your, your career is an education, personal development, and this show is about personal development. Um, yes. And I'm going to ask you for a book recommendation later, but I want to talk about you have a tremendous library of products and I I, I want to be honest with you Mike here I'm a, I'm a tech guy and I, I, sure um, your site is a, and I've been on your I've spent lots of time on your site and it's difficult Good. to navigate because I don't probably more than I've ever spent on it <laughs> really oh man so, oh yeah I never look at it um, but you know I I don't know where to start um, and, and you know because I certainly you know I, I know who you are I've looked at tons of your YouTube videos I know that you have uh, great uh, results, um, but uh, if I'm not ready to, to pull the, the coaching trigger yet, 
where where would I start on your site? What is a product that? Uh, and this, by the way, for everybody, this is not a commercial for Mike, and and I I really think you should check out his site. But um, where would I start? Is it the mornings with Mike uh, epi- stuff or? Well, I, that's first of all, it's a great question. Thank you, and I and I I would be the first to tell you that um, I do go online because I've learned to do this in spite of what everybody says, my inability to do these kind of things. And I look at all my competitor sites all the time. I mean, I'm very conscious of all the great speakers, coaches, and trainers out there. I mean, I've got some favorites like a Craig Proctor or, or a Bob Cochran and some of these guys that are really, to me, really good guys and then good trainers, coaches, etc. And I look at everybody's sites all the time, including my sons, Matt and Tom, who are quote unquote technically competitors of mine and I look at what they do and quite honestly I I find the same challenge that you refer to it's hard to navigate through this stuff unless you have a high level of expertise in technology which very 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 few real estate agents have that degree of technology training so then I'll say okay if you're going to my site are you looking for a product that you can listen to to help you learn to sell well there's a, a button that presses products Do you need scripts to follow? There's a button that says scripts. But I tell people all the time, if you just, we have one little segment called a day in the life of, Hmm. and we have, I think about 14 or 15 half hour interviews that I did with very successful agents, not mega, 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 mega agents, just great agents. Now, interestingly enough, um, these 14 or 15 day in the life of videos um, in the last 18 months have been viewed over 90,000 times. Because wow. we, we, we record that, 90,000. Gosh darn it, that's that's 8 or 9% of all the real estate agents in the U.S. in terms of the number. So I'm going to say, if, depending on what the agent's need is. Now, I, I did have a fun conversation with a Microsoft guy a couple weeks ago who's really a bright guy, and he said, I looked at your site. Would you let me redo the whole thing? I said, no. He said, why? I said, well, NAR has stated that our site is the best site for real estate salespeople. That's what NER says, okay, because we have the most information. Mm. I wish I could tell you I knew of a way to make it simpler for agents. I don't have that expertise. If any of our great listeners today can give me some advice on how to make it simpler, tell them to give me a buzz. Sure, yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. because I'm open to that. I mean, we want, we want the information to flow to them in the easiest method possible. Um, our marketing director goes to tech conferences on a regular basis just to learn more of how we can accomplish what you just said. Um, the problem is not, I don't think, your site or my site. The problem is the site of the agents, meaning they don't have a vision of what they want, so they can't go to the right. site and see it. They right. can't go to the site and see it. Yeah, that is a great point. That is a, that is a great point that I didn't think about. I was just, again, for me, I just, you know, I was like, okay, what, you know, where should I start here? Because, you know, and I want to make a small, you know, I want to just dip my toe in there, you know, get some, you know, sure. get some of your information. Um, and, uh, and by the way, one thing you guys have done on your site, you have done really well is your SEO ranking. If you, if you Google you. real estate coaching, you guys are always up front. And I, I've done it in multiple ways for, even for us, you know, real estate training or whatever. Um, so, so let's talk about a book. You know, it, it, I'm an aspiring agent, um, and we're wrapping this up, by the way, Mike. So I appreciate you hanging well, in there you. with us. Um, I, I'm an aspiring agent. Uh, w- give me a book that that is I absolutely need to read. Well, I, I'm not a I'm I'm not a great fan of sales books. Now I've written several for real estate people, and you know, I mean, I I, I published one I guess five or six months ago. We've sold seven or eight thousand copies already, and I you know. It, so you can go online and you'll see that. But I think I've always said that the most important books are the books that, that trigger other great thoughts in your head. So they're books that are more general in nature about the development of a person. There's, hmm. a, there's a wonderful book that Jim Rohn had written many, 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 many years ago, and it's called Leading an, Expired, Lead, Leading an Inspired Life. It's, it's a wonderful book to read, and I, I recommend it all the time. There's also a book, um, remember the old book Psycho-Cybernetics? from way back it's one of the great books written in the uh, 60s by maxwell maltz and and there's a new book out i'm I'm gonna restate that there's a book that came out uh, about 10 years ago called psycho cybernetics 2000 and it's a really great book for helping people create the vision to create the understanding of how to get to the next level and how they think and how they act and how they behave 
Um, so I, I'm a great believer in reading all the books on mindset. I've read thousands, you know, and I'm not saying that to brag, um, on different aspects of mindset, okay? Because, see, my attitude is if the mindset is right and open to learning, then what you and I teach them on how to sell will become acceptable. Right. If the mindset is not open to learning, it doesn't matter what we say. So I would say Leading an Inspired Life is a wonderful book to read, and I would say that uh, Psycho-Cybernetics 2000 is a wonderful book to read. I love it. And, and uh, you know, there's a quote from Jim Rohn that I love. Uh, and I'm not sure if it came out of that book, but, but here's a quote. It says that uh, you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. <laughs> I tell you, his materials are so good. And I've, I've read so many of his great quotes, so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because he is he's one of the best of the best. Um, so I'm going to ask you this question, even though it, it may not apply to you, but I, I'm still going to ask it. Is uh, It's about an Internet yes. tool. Do, do you have an Internet tool like an Evernote that you're in love with that you can share with our audience? You know, I have to tell you, I wish I could say yes. I, I don't even – when you say Internet tool, tell me what you mean so I can maybe <laughs> figure out an answer. Um, yeah, yes. no, that's okay. Um, so, you know, Evernote, if you know Evernote, it's an app, you know, that you can that, okay, yep. that you I've can take it. notes and, it's, and yep. it syncs between all your devices. So, you yes. know, I don't know if there's a, a, a different kind of tool that you might use on a daily basis. I have the best tool there is. Her name is Anna Avila, <laughs> who's been my assistant for a long time. And I've talked to her. And, she's really nice. Yeah, and I call her – 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I try never to disturb her on her personal time. And I send her emails all the time on things that I want to think about or accomplish or reminded of. And she is my direct link to productivity. So I would tell you that even though I'm aware of all that stuff, I'm much more comfortable having communication with people versus just um, devising a method to avoid the communication, I guess I should say. Right. So I, I guess I don't, I'm not probably the right one. I like the question. I'll have to ask Anna what uh, of these devices I should consider next. I'm so happy that I can answer my emails on my iPad. <laughs> and I'm really thrilled that I can answer my own phone. So that shows you how far I've come. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll tell you, you know, it, when, it, when it comes to that, to that internet tool, Mike, is, is, you know, I've interviewed people that do $20 million a year up to $150 million a year. Sure. And the higher you go up the ladder, in terms of success, in terms of more sales volume, those people, they don't have internet tools. You know, they, they are oh, they pen don't. and paper and phone in face. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's interesting because my competitors will tell you and I the opposite of that, but the truth is even the ones that my competitors coach when you talk to them, they agree with what you just said. So thank you for saying that. Go I wrong. appreciate it. Um, let's talk about personal habits really quick. And, and again, we have two more questions okay. and we're done. Do you have any personal habits that, that you feel have contributed to your personal success? Well, I, I didn't, uh, I barely made it out of high school. I flunked out of college the first semester of my freshman year, so I don't have, I'm not proud to say that I'm highly educated. So my personal habit of reading, which I still do today, I mean, I still read today, probably, I, I'm probably cut back. I know some people are going to laugh at me, but I've probably cut back to 100 books a year. Oh, my God. Um, which, but I went for 30 years reading 200 books a year. And so that's probably my number one habit. Number two, uh, and probably the most important is I, I'm really, I, I'm a fanatic on being able to look people in the eye and ask them a question, whether it be a con confrontational question or a question that I'm trying to learn something from them. I'm a fanatic on the fact that if you don't learn to ask questions of other people, you're never going to learn as much as you should. Anybody that hangs around me knows that I pester them to death with questions. And I'll ask as many as they will answer until they tell me not to ask anymore, because it's the only way to learn about people and things and ideas is to ask. I agree. And you've been doing it, and you've been doing it so well on this interview. Thank you for that. Oh, I appreciate that, I, and I, I I really appreciate that, Mike. Um, so you know, so if you read a hundred books a year, I, I, how much TV do you watch? Oh gosh, um, for many, 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 many years, I always made it a point at eleven thirty-five to turn on the first five minutes of Johnny Carson so I could laugh before I went to sleep. Um, and now probably a couple nights a week, I'll turn on 11.35 to watch Letterman or Leno to watch their five to seven minute little opening skit because that makes me laugh before I go to sleep. Um, my wife has a couple of great TV shows that she enjoys, and once in a while I do watch those with her, but I am an absolute addict for watching professional golf, oh. football, and basketball on TV. I love it, and I watch it all the time. Um, so ESPN Sports Center would be my favorite show because I get to catch all the highlights of sport. I'm, I'm a fanatic on competition, 
and on watching greatness perform, and that's what you get in professional sports. Wow, that is surprising. I thought you were going to say you don't watch TV at all. Um, <clears throat> no, I've, 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 always, I've always been hooked on sports. Um, for a new agent, Mike, what are the first three steps a new agent should do to begin building his business in the next 10 days? A is they better commit to prospecting, talking to people they don't know. Um, whatever avenue they want to use to make that happen, they have to do it. Second, they have to know the inventory. They yes. have to understand the neighborhoods, the prices, the climate of the town they're operating in. And third, they have to immediately go to somebody and say, what do I say to somebody when I when I meet them? And that's where we have been our at our best is offering very basic scripts from how to call a pat well they wouldn't have a past client but how to call a center of influence to knock on on a door of a neighbor to introduce themselves they have to prospect they absolutely have to at every, at every point in their life preview property and they have to learn what to say if they expect to survive I love it. Well, Mike, I can't tell you how much I've appreciated this interview. I've learned a lot. I, I know everybody in the audience has been scribbling out two pages of notes. I certainly have been. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so just give us one piece of parting guidance and let us know where we can find you, and we'll sign off. Well, our, our, um, my email address is mike.ferry at mikeferry.com. Um, I receive 350 emails a day, and Anna or I read every one, and I respond to every one, um, which we've made it a habit of doing several years ago. Um, I don't even know our office number. Uh, the 800 number, I don't know. It's We have a 702 area code because we're in Las Vegas. Uh, 9826260. Um, obviously, go to our website and, and look up what we do. And, and I appreciate what you said. I really take that to heart about trying to weave through it all. But, you know, I, I think we've been around long enough that if people want to find us, they can find us. And if, and if they don't want to find us, they don't have to. But I really appreciate the opportunity to share these thoughts with you today and what you're doing for all these agents. I, I just hope they're listening and learning. Thank you so much, Mike. Well, I, I again, I appreciate it. And uh, we'll sign off and, and have an, uh, here's my new tagline. I'm trying to figure this out my, my, my sign off line, but uh, it's live accountably. I like it. Thank you for that. And thanks to all your listeners. And thanks to you. Thanks, Mike. What a great interview. You know, Mike really got into some actionable tips, some actual advice, some nuggets in this episode. Here are some of the highlights I got out of it. Invest in yourself. Go out, hire a coach. And if you don't get a coach, if you don't think you can afford a coach, that's all right. At least follow Mike's path and read 100 books a year. I absolutely agree with him when he said that it's the top 5 to 8% of agents who control 95% of the inventory. Where are you in that lineup? What will it take for you to get more of that market share? I also really liked how he told us that hearing no, getting no, is just part of the process. Don't take it personally. You know, accept that as part of the job. Mike also did a really good job of breaking down what it takes to succeed. You know, he told us there are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts to success. Stop looking for those loopholes. Go out and do what you have to do. Get in front of people, i.e. prospect pre-qualify them, and then just present. Present what you can do for them. Go out and do it today, and then do it again tomorrow. It's, it's really that simple. It's just hard work, and I've heard it over and over again. So I really hope that you can get one thing out of this episode and implement it in your business today. And if you did enjoy this episode, I would love for you to do something for me. Please go to iTunes, subscribe, and leave a rating and review. And then when you do that, go tell a friend about the show. And that's how we're going to grow. So, so help us out. You know, we want to keep delivering these great little coaching sessions. And if you look at iTunes, there's been shows like this before, but they're like five years old and people either lose interest or whatever. We are building a great and vibrant community. So, so please help us build it. And the other thing too is, you know, listen, if, if, if I open the show up thanking people for email. So if you have any questions, if you have any comments, feel free to send me an email. You can send it to superagentslive at gmail.com or just go to the website superagentslive.com and uh, hit contact and that goes right to my phone. Um, and if you have questions for future guests, that's great. Throw them at me. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll include them in a future show. What I want to do is I want to build a panel, uh, people like Mike or some of the other folks, Chad Goldwasser, and, and present your questions to the panel and get three or four different viewpoints on that same question. So if you have questions, again, send them to me, have the email. Until next time, I'm Toby Salgado, and I personally thank you for listening to Super Agents Live.
percent.